Thanks to Bones and All for sponsoring a portion of this video. This is not video footage, it's a render. But it looks pretty photo real, right? Like, achieving this level of quality in CGI would normally require a huge amount of time and effort. But what if I told you that I easily made this in a matter of minutes thanks to a brand new technology called Nerf? Nerf! No, not that kind of Nerf. No, no, not that one either! No! I'm talking about neural radiance fields, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how they're gonna change filmmaking forever. I've managed to make a career out of experimenting with new technologies to create short films, and along the way, we've learned tons of tools such as deepfakes, virtual production, and one of my favorites, 3D scanning. Little known fact about photo scanning is that when Ren does it, he makes a very specific face. Ren, would you like to show them the face that you make when you photo scan? There it is! It's the most serious face I've ever seen on Ren. It's every time he photo scans, it's always. We've been using photo scans in our videos for years. Being able to just take some photos and then after a few minutes, get a pretty good looking 3D model that I could then just use for whatever. I mean, come on, that's a superpower. But here's the thing. Photo scanning has always been just a shortcut on the road to rendering 3D scenes. A lot of effort is still needed to set up the lighting and make sure the scanned materials look correct because out of the box, they just never do. However, some things are simply impossible to scan. I should probably not do that. How do you feel about photo scanning this? Be impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's too many reflections. This is not gonna work. Why wouldn't it work? Photo scans rely on the pixels to be consistent. Chrome ball, it changes every single angle you look at it. Therefore, it's impossible to reconstruct. Beautifully said. Did you try it? Oh, I'm about to. Yeah? I don't know how it's gonna go. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be super weird. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I processed the scans. The table got perfect. Look at these frickin' chips here. Mm, look at these cookies. Mm. However, the chrome ball, it's like a crunched up can. The photo scan didn't even try scanning the bottle. It just kind of got to it and the parts that it could see that were transparent, it's like, eh, there's nothing there. Photo scanning isn't magic, it's math. And when the math isn't perfect, you end up with unusable garbage. I do not know how nerfs are supposed to solve this though. Oh, well, I got a video for you, Sam. It's the end of this one. When, when this one's done and uploaded, you can watch it and then you'll be like, ah. Sweet. Uh, yeah, you guys fast forward to that. Now I'm gonna take these same photos and instead of processing them with photogrammetry, I'm gonna process them into a neural radiance field. I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to figure out how to do a nerf. There's a lot of things I gotta download and install and uninstall and reinstall. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make a nerf. Okay, I've made it through all of this all afternoon. If this works, when I hit enter, this will be my first neural radiance field. Okay, okay, I know these results are a little janky. It's kind of blurry, there's all these weird floating artifacts and holes everywhere, but the ball has accurate reflections. It's even got the transparency of the bottle. So here's the photo scan, but here is the nerf. After I tweeted out these results, frickin' Paul Franklin of all people responded that he could see a VFX revolution on the horizon. And he knows a couple things about VFX, having won the Oscar for best visual effects twice. To understand why visual effects artists are excited about nerfs, we first need to understand how light works. The holy grail for any CG artist is photorealism. To make an image so utterly realistic, it convinces your brain that it is real. So what is the secret to photorealism? Reflections. If I was to ask you to point out all of the reflections in this scene, you'd probably point out the balloon, maybe the bell, or even the water. But look, the white wall is bouncing back some of the red of the painting. In fact, every object is reflecting light from every other object. I mean, think about it. Everything we see is just light that has reached our eyeballs. Now, unless you're looking directly at a source of light, ah, the sun, oh my eyes. It first has to reflect off of something along the way. So this was a trick question because technically, everything we see is a reflection because reflections are how we see stuff. They play a subtle but crucial role in convincing our brains that stuff is real. Check out this photo scan of some pans. Now check out this nerf of the same pans. See the difference? As the camera moves 
moves around, the reflections change realistically without having to add any CG lights. And that's because nerfs rely on neural rendering, just like deepfakes do. It's able to learn what the color of every point in a 3D space is, depending on where you're viewing it from. And when you have an entire field of these points, you end up with something that looks shockingly similar to the photos used to make the scan. Now let's compare the nerf to a real video, and they look, well, they kind of look the same because it was literally trained on this exact video. And that is the entire point. It's the ability to quickly, easily, and cheaply replicate reality in a way that looks like video. This portion of the video is sponsored by Bones and All, a new movie coming out only to theaters this Thanksgiving. It's a new movie about a couple young people who fall in love, who are also cannibals. <laughs> this movie stars Taylor Russell and of course the Dune Man himself, Timothy Chalamet. The story revolves around Marin and Lee, two wayward kids trying to find their place in society as they munch down on people. They embark on a liberating road trip as they try to figure out what their place in society really is. Cause I mean, where is a place for people who eat people? It is a love story, but it's also like a horror thriller movie. It's like bending these genres like frickin' Picasso. The performances are incredible, the cinematography is good, the directing is excellent. It's directed by Luca Guadagnino. If you're a true cinephile, chances are you're gonna love this film. So check it out in your local theater this Thanksgiving or go to bonesandallfilm.com to get tickets today. Once again, thanks to Bones and All for sponsoring this section of the video. Now it's time to get back to this crazy new scanning technology. My journey with the Chrome Ball started over the summer with NVIDIA's Instant Nerf program, but I had to learn a bunch of Python coding and use a command terminal just to get the thing to run. Now, however, it's as easy as using a phone app, thanks to Luma AI. It's like Polycam, one of my other favorite apps, but it's for nerfs. You take a bunch of different photos and you upload it to their server. A couple minutes later, you get back a nerf. It's great, and it's easy, and it's fast. But I need to be able to import my own camera animation separately. And that's something I can actually now do with the website version of this app on my computer. And that opens so many doors. And I'm gonna spend the rest of this video walking through some of them. Apparently not that one. So I know what you might be thinking. What can you do with this new Nerf technology? Well, one of the more obvious and easy things to do is just a simple background replacement. So Nico here is standing in front of our X green screen wall. Don't worry about it, I'm gonna roto him. Typically, most people, when they're shooting on a green screen, the camera's gonna be locked off because the background needs to match the foreground, and the moment you add motion to everything, you're gonna have a hard time. Like me, right now. What we're doing here with Nico is we're going to take the camera out of the tripod and move it around. I'm gonna be using Biplay camera app to 3D track the scene as I record the footage here, and then I'll replace the background and make him look like he's anywhere. I'm in a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so another idea you can do with this type of scanning tech is like, Portals. What if this door turned into a portal? This is really a door to another world. So you first gotta start by 3D tracking your shot. This is all pretty standard. Then I can take that exact same camera move and apply it to any radiance field that I want. Whoa. Yo. What? Oh man, now it's a new one? How's this working? And if, can I even peer through it? Whoa, no kidding. Sick. Oh wait, where'd it go? I wanna go back. I just shot for 40 seconds. This is a 40 second one take VFX shot. And it's not even a thing. I mean, it was a bit of a thing, but not too much of a thing. So going back to the stuff I shot with Nico, here are a few things I learned. I was just having fun rendering out shots because it was so easy just to take the exact same camera move and drop it in another scene. Whoa, look at that. Wow, what a spot. Look at that, that's crazy. Like I put them on top of a mountain where I like to go one wheeling, I put them in my kitchen, I put them in a garden at night. Nerfs work really well at night. Have you ever tried photo scanning anything at night? It doesn't work. It doesn't work, but, but this worked. Another thing is just how subtle reflections can really be. I know we talked about this earlier, but it's what makes all of this stuff just sell so well is because the wall slightly getting brighter when a reflection gets a little bit more direct to your eyes. That's how light works. It just, it looks like footage. This better look photo real, otherwise I'm gonna be disappointed. Whoa! <laughs> the, the camera just kind of went through the geometry there a little bit. It's not geometry. Those aren't polygons at all. Those are radiance fields. And lastly, check out the shot of Nico on my kitchen table next to a plant. You know, a 3D camera move is still something you can scale down or up. And that gave me an idea. 
what if I scaled the world down to make someone big? R R Ren, could you scale me back down, please? Or like scale the room up or something? I don't know how you did this, but I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. We must go bigger, bigger. You don't have to use your phone. It's just based off of images. They can come from anywhere. So I'm gonna use my drone. What I'm looking to get here is I'm basically trying to get a scan of that big building so that I could then comp in a shot of a person all big. All right, I captured the Nerf. Now I gotta capture myself so that I can 3D track this shot and put it in the Nerf. I'm gonna have it spin around me. Nah, I'm King Kong! Ah! All right, we got something there. Ah, I am the king of the world, yeah! <laughs> What sells the shot for me is, of course, the lighting. I captured both the plate and the Nerf outdoors at golden hour, and the Nerf has captured all of that golden sunset goodness. Pro tip, if you want your Nerfs and plates to match, capture both of them with the same lighting conditions and ideally the same camera as well. So Nerfs get you cheap photorealism, but it's not just any photorealism, it's a specific flavor that's tuned to the camera that actually captures it. So I'm gonna do an experiment comparing the scans from a red camera versus a webcam. This is the stupidest thing. I have ever done. My theory is that one scan will have a cinematic look and the other scan will have a bit of a cheap webcam look. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I expected. You know, you got compression, dynamic range, the quality of your lens. All of these will have an impact on your finished scan. And speaking of cinematic, the dream of a gimbal operator is to get like the smoothest, most cinematic shots. But sometimes for whatever reason, maybe you're not able to get that sort of smoothness you want. So I'm gonna get the most ridiculous camera move possible here. Like this is not gonna be a good shot, but the magic of nerfs is that it can do this. For comparison, here's what Warp Stabilizer did with the shot. I'm also not limited to simple camera moves either. I can get as complex as I want. Do you remember Frozen Crossing Alpha? Everyone's frozen in time and the camera's moving through that. When they needed to speed up the shot, they would take the footage and fast forward it, but then you get the yeah, 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 yeah. But if they were able to just do a radiance field scan of the whole thing, they could pick and choose their camera moves after the fact. This is the nerf. Dude, whoa! Your face gets a little weird here up close. Oh, dude, it's a little bit smushy. Can I take this and extract geometry from it still? Yes, you can extract the geometry, but you lose all of the reflectiveness because it all gets baked down into a single diffuse texture. And so that texture then doesn't change as you orbit around and view it from different spots. It's a little like, you know, being handed the keys to a Rolls Royce and then being like, sweet, I'm only gonna need the hubcaps. Mmm, it's almost like you're leaving the most valuable part behind. Exactly! The most valuable part of a Nerf is the actual neural render. That's what you get that photogrammetry doesn't give you. Nerfs are at their most powerful when we treat them like video footage rather than a scene to pull textures and models out of. But it does allow you to do something cool like, uh collision geometry for simulation. Yeah, dude, drop a cloth on that. Now you're getting the best of both worlds. You're still utilizing uh -huh. the sort of photogrammetry mesh of the whole scan, but what we're looking at is still the neural render. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'd be so sick if you could apply motion blur inside of the Nerf program and depth of field inside oh, of Oh, dude, the you're Nerf totally program. right. Like, it's so early days. The tools are so rudimentary. It feels like I'm trying to carve a statue with other rocks. It's like, technically I can get it to work, but it's just taking a lot of just pounding away at it. <laughs> it is literally 12.44 a.m. right now, because this video needs to be done tomorrow. It's been difficult to explain this to people. A lot of like jaggy edges and stuff. It's kind of weird smeariness in the background. It's a little bit smushy. This better look photoreal, otherwise I'm gonna be disappointed. Why is your green screen white? See, it's like, it's not about how perfect the results are right now. It's about the potential of these results, you know? I have a very strong belief that it's just a matter of time before no one will be able to tell the difference between a nerf and actual video. I think I need one more shot. Something to like really demonstrate how crazy useful this new tech can be. Ah, ah there it goes. Yep, I guess I'm not dreaming. I think I know what our final shot's gonna be. 
We're gonna try to do an Inception shot. You know the shot in Inception when like Paris folds over? I'm doing one of those, kind of. I'm doing a poor man's interpretation of the very advanced effect, but it's gonna require like a thousandth of the effort. Ren, are we doing an Inception shot because you're trying to impress Paul Franklin? I'm not not doing that. Okay, we don't really have access to this spot, so I'm just gonna record a quick shot. Now to quickly get a Rebel scan. The Rebel scans have gotten away from us this time. Because of all the chaotic stuff going on here, if I wanted to actually shoot a video, it would have been too hard. But fortunately, I was able to get a scan, so in theory, I can go back and actually do all the production filmmaking after the fact. Car. It. I hope at least some of these ideas have inspired you to pay attention to the nerfs. I mean, there's a lot of potential here and I've just barely scratched the surface. It's our job as artists to push this tech as far as it will go. None of these shots in this video were like production ready, but I hope that maybe they inspire some sort of nugget of an idea in you so that you can get into this stuff as well and push the bounds too. Of course, I recommend Luma. It's what I've been using for the majority of this video, but my buddy James helped me with NVIDIA's instant nerf thing. In fact, I think he has a plugin out that allows you to control all of that stuff inside of Blender. And also as of today, Polycam announced a partnership with Nerf Studio. There's tons of options. And if there's anyone out there not yet convinced of the potential of this new technology, I implore you to just look two papers down the line to see where this tech is going. It's exciting. What a time to be alive. We keep calling it nerfs, but I would like to make a point right now to change the name because I think nerfs are a stupid name. Let's be honest, it's confusing. I think a better, more apt name would be light fields. Light fields is much cooler. And technically, it's kind of the opposite of a radiance field, but it's still the same sort of thing in the end. Technically, light fields are a little different, but in the end, you're still getting the same sort of result. And so I think light fields are a much cooler name than nerfs. I implore everyone to use that name instead because who cares?